Stretch and strain are uh, basic kinematic quantities that we use to describe the uh, deformation state of materials and in particular trying to understand how they are carrying their loads. And so I'd like to start with stretch and we'll begin with this construction. So we'll, we'll consider body B and it's deformed with the deformation map phi and ends up then as in some kind of configuration which we'll label BT. And material points located at capital X end up at locations little x after deformation. And what I want to think about is sitting at a material point capital X and looking at a line segment of material D capital X. And after deformation, that line segment of material will still be attached to the point little x, but now will be in a new orientation and it'll have a new length and the new vector will be D little x. And, and we know how that vector transport occurs, it occurs through the deformation gradient. The stretch is defined to be the ratio of the lengths of the two vectors. So it's the ratio of the new vector, so the norm of d little x, divided by the norm of d capital X. So it gives us the relative uh, length change of the material. So if, if, if the stretch is equal to 1, there's no change in length of the material. But if it's greater than one, it's extending, and if it's less than one, it's contracting. And it's always going to be strictly less than zero. Because if it goes negative or to zero, that means you compress material down to a point or you've passed it through itself. So you'd have material inversion, which is not physically possible. Okay, so let's expand out our expression. So if I take the norm of d little x, d little x is f d capital x, so its norm is just going to be the dot product square root, and in the bottom we'll have the same thing. And now what I can do is I can, I'll go ahead and use the definition of the transpose, I'll move the first f onto the other side of the dot, so I'll end up with d capital f dotted with f transpose f dx, and f transpose f is a quantity that comes up quite often, so I'm going to go ahead and define that to be, I'll use the symbol C, and it has a name also, it's called the right Cauchy Green Deformation Tensor, and so we'll use that quite a bit in what follows. So rearranging things a little bit, I end up with the square root of D capital X divided by the norm of D capital X dotted with C acting on D capital X divided by the norm of D capital X. So d capital X divided by the norm of d capital X, that's really just a unit vector. So we'll call that n, uh, maybe a, let's go ahead and call it nr. So something associated with the reference configuration. So it's just a direction. So it's the direction that we're looking at at the point capital X. And so we get a final expression for the stretch. It depends on the location, capital X, and it depends on this direction, let's say nr. And it's the square root of nr dotted with c acting on nr. So we, we pick a direction in the reference body, pick a point. If we know the deformation map, then we can calculate the deformation gradient, which means we can calculate the right Cauchy Green deformation tensor. And then we can execute this operation here, sandwich it between the direction vector that we're interested in, take the square root, that will give us the stretch. If we want, we can also define strain, something known as normal strain, is usually characterized as delta L over L, so change in length over length. And if we expand that out in the construction that we have here, it's the norm of D little x minus the norm of D big X, so that's the delta L, and divided by the norm of D capital X, so that's the L. So with a little bit of algebra, one sees that the normal strain is just simply the stretch minus one. So that's another relationship that one can use. And notice that epsilon is again a function of big X and nr. Okay, so things can be different from point to point. So let's go ahead and, and just look at an example and let's look at the example of simple shear. So I want to think of a body, it's one meter by one meter, and I'm going to shear it over so that at the top of the body, the corner point has displaced 10 centimeters there. 
And what I want to do is try and compute what stretches along the diagonal of the body. So an R I'll take to be slanted at 45 degrees here. That's too hard to read there. Let me just remove that. So the angle there is 45. So first, uh, the deformation map for simple shear is going to be uh, little x1 is equal to big X1 plus 0.1 divided by 1 times x2, so the height above x2, and then nothing moves in the two directions, so little x2 equals big X2. So let's go ahead and first calculate the deformation gradient. So the components of the deformation gradient are all the partial derivatives of little x i with respect to big x j. And so expanded out, we'll do this in 2D. We have the derivative of little x1 with respect to big x1, and then little x1 with respect to big x2, little x2 with respect to big x1, and little x2 with respect to big x2. So we need four partial derivatives. So those are easy for this deformation map. We'll end up with 1, 0 0.1, 0, and 1. Okay, so the next thing to do is to calculate the right Cauchy Green deformation tensor. So C is equal to F transpose F. So we can fill in since we know what F is. And now we can do the matrix multiplication there. And we get the components of C. Uh, so let's be precise here. So the components of C are equal to the components of transpose F. And that gives us this matrix of components here of 1, 0 0.1, and 1.01. .01. And now we're in a position to use our relationship for the stretch along the diagonal. So lambda is a function of nr. And nr is 1 over root 2. So we have 1 over root 2. And then we take the dot product with c. And we apply that to nr. And then we take the square root. So we just have to do this matrix vector multiplication and the dot product with the vector there. And then take the square root. So if we do the multiplication out, we'll end up with 1 plus 0 0.1 plus 1 half. 0.1 squared, square root. And if we work that out, it should come out to 1.05, assuming I didn't get any mistakes there. And if we want to know what the strain is, then the strain, remember, is just lambda minus 1. So we end up with 0 0.05 which is 5%. So it's a 5% strain along the diagonal uh, for this 10 centimeter motion of the, this 1 meter by 1 meter block of material. Um, let me point out here that this state of deformation is something known as homogeneous. And what that simply means is that F is independent of X. So if we look at the deformation gradient here, we see it's just a set of numbers and there's no X1 or X2 appearing in there. And so when you have that type of situation, we say that the, the deformation is homogeneous. Uh, and that just simply means it's independent of x. So you, usually when you calculate stretches and strains, they depend on the point you're looking at. But here, I didn't dis, uh, define what point I was interested in. I just defined the direction. And the reason for that was because the deformation was homogeneous. So I knew it didn't matter at what point I was going to look at the stretch in the diagonal direction. Uh, other homogeneous deformations are simple elongation and rigid motion. Those are both homogeneous. Uh, the, a case that uh, I've given you before that's not homogeneous is, is the case of bending. So the bending deformation, the Timoshenko bending kinematics I gave you, they do not lead to homogeneous deformations. So that one is non-homogeneous or inhomogeneous.